It's November 20th here in Seoul, and I'm Kim Dami. We begin with these stories making the headlines at this hour. Starting with President Yoon Sogar's state visit to the United Kingdom. The South Korean leader will become Britain's first state guest since the coronation of King Charles III in May, while also marking 140 years of South Korea-UK diplomatic ties. Yoon will also make a stop in Paris for a final push for Busan's bid to host the 2030 World Expo. The Israeli military has released footage of what it claims is a 55-meter tunnel used by Hamas beneath the Al-Shifa hospital in Gaza, while the White House says a hostage and negotiations are, quote, closer than ever. South Korea's T1 won the 2023 League of Legends World Championship by defeating China's Weibo Gaming. Sunday's victory is the team's record fourth title in the eSport tournament held here in Seoul. President Yoon Seok-yeol is uh, traveling to the UK on Monday for an official state visit following an invitation from King Charles. Now, the trip will include a host of royal events, but will also be an opportunity to bring about progress in a variety of areas of uh, cooperation. Our Oh Soo-young starts us off. President Yoon Seok-yeol says his state visit to the United Kingdom will serve as a catalyst for Korea to emerge as one of the UK's global strategic partners. Speaking to The Telegraph ahead of his trip on Monday to mark 140 years of bilateral relations, Yoon called for closer collaboration between Seoul and London amid complex global poly crises, including North Korea's nuclear threat and the regime's weapons cooperation with Russia, as well as wars in Ukraine and the Middle East. He also expressed concern over closer collaboration between Pyongyang, Moscow and China, as well as tensions in the South China Sea. These make it all the more vital to ramp up economic and security cooperation with the UK, Yoon told the paper. In a press briefing, Yoon spokesperson Yi Dawn said Sunday that during Yoon's state visit, the two governments would announce a comprehensive document laying out specific areas of cooperation called the Korea-UK Accord. Excluding the United States, it is unprecedented for our country to issue a comprehensive document of this kind. It is expected to be an opportunity to re-establish our diplomatic relations. Following a royal reception, luncheon and tribute to Korean war veterans, he added that the South Korean leader would make a speech to Parliament in English, as he did at the US Congress. With Britain's tilt to the Indo-Pacific, its post-Brexit strategy to engage more deeply with countries in the region, amid trade and geopolitical uncertainty in the world, the two countries are expected to bolster cooperation in various fields. The UK has a developed defence industry and is also a permanent member of the UN Security Council. Since Korea will serve as a non-permanent member of the Council for two years starting next year, there's great potential for cooperation in terms of security. Also elaborating on economic ties, he noted that the UK is the world's sixth largest economy with a GDP of over $3 trillion and a trade volume with South Korea of $12 billion last year. We're seeing rise in luxury goods trade, we're seeing rise in renewable energy, we're seeing mm. rises in um, automotives. You know, some of our automotive brands' career is in their top five markets. So um, defence as well uh, and digital. So Korea is a really strong market for, for British business and it's great that that's increased. Um, this year marks the start of negotiations for the free trade agreement and that is a really exciting opportunity for Britain and UK businesses. Following his visit to the UK, Seoul's top office says Yoon will head to France for three days to promote Korea's bid to host the 2030 World Expo in the port city of Busan, engaging with various delegates of the Expo's organisation based in Paris. He said the final presentation for Busan will be made by an influential figure in the international community ahead of the final vote on November 28. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News. And over the weekend, President Yoon wrapped up his APEC trip in San Francisco. In the last stop of his three-day trip, he took the podium along with his Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida at Stanford University. Our Kim do reports. A clear sign of an improving bilateral relationship at Stanford University on Friday local time, leaders of South Korea and Japan, for the first time ever, co-hosted an event in a third country. 
국제사회에서 저와 가장 가까운 기시다 후미오 총리님과 또 혁신의 산실인 스탠포드 교정을 함께 방문하게 되어 매우 기쁩니다. Kishida also called the occasion a big day, referring to Stanford's American football game against local rivals UC Berkeley, and said it's a, quote, new feeling as the leaders met for the eighth time just this year. Until last year, no one could have imagined a situation like this. My belief is that if a national leader makes decisions and takes action, it can change the world. President Yoon made efforts to improve bilateral relations since early this year as cooperation between the neighboring countries had been severed on multiple fronts since 2019 when a South Korean court ruled that Japanese firms should compensate the victims of wartime forced labor during World War II. At this symposium, the two pledged to work together in science and tech, including ways to cooperate in hydrogen energy and tackling climate change. And of course, all this with their other key partner from Camp David Summit, the U.S. This groundbreaking event was Yoon's last stop of his APEC trip, where he engaged in three days of multilateral diplomacy. President Yoon, addressing leaders representing 60% of the world's GDP, proposed an APEC initiative for smart mobility led by South Korea, focusing on eco-friendly and autonomous vehicles. He emphasized South Korea's aim to pioneer rule-based AI development and advocated for a return to rule-based multilateral trade. Amidst all this, he met with leading business figures in the U.S. as well with four companies, General Motors, DuPont, IMC, and Ecolab, announcing investments to South Korea totaling 1.16 billion U.S. dollars. By attracting foreign investment through the top office's diplomatic efforts, we can immediately contribute not only to our economic growth, but also to the creation of good jobs. The investment from four U.S. companies is expected to generate numerous high-quality jobs, especially in advanced industries like automobiles and semiconductors. In addition, his participation at the sideline summit among the 14 IPAF members garnered attention as two more pillars on cooperation on clean energy and anti-corruption measures were officially accepted with only the fourth and final pillar on trade matters to be agreed. Kim do Arirang News. The Israeli military on Sunday released video footage of a tunnel shift. It says it is used by Hamas under the Al-Shifa hospital. The Israel Defense Forces say the tunnel shift extends 10 meters underground and that the tunnel itself continues for 55 meters and includes a blast-proof door and firing holes. The military also announced Sunday the capture of more than 100 Hamas operatives during recent ground offensives in Gaza City. It added that they are being interrogated and have provided information on the locations of Hamas tunnels, weapons depots and operational methods. Meanwhile, the White House says a deal to release hostages is closer than ever, as the negotiators seek the freedom of 50 Israeli hostages in exchange for a temporary ceasefire and more aid, including fuel, for Gaza. South Korea's defense minister says North Korea may launch a military spy satellite as early as within a week or so. Defense Minister Shin Won-sik said in an interview on KBS that the North's preparations suggest that the launch could take place before South Korea launches its first indigenous reconnaissance satellite on SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket from California on November 30th. Shin said that the North is believed to have almost resolved its engine problems with Russia's help. He said Seoul and Washington are closely monitoring the move, saying a success of successful launch would mean that the North's advancement in rocket technology and surveillance capabilities that could offset the South's upper hand. Shin's remarks came a day after the North missed the widely expected launch deadline of November 18th. North Korea has made two failed attempts back in May and August. 
South Korea's electronic administrative network is expected to be fully functioning again today after three days of system failure. The interior ministry stated that an error in the network equipment caused a system outage, disrupting civil services, especially the civil service portal for issuing government-approved documents. More than 100 civil workers and IT experts worked on fixing the problem and temporarily reopened services on Saturday. And an official from the interior ministry has announced plans to create a task force to reorganize e-government services. Now, this was the first first ever incident when the nation's public administrative network was down. North Korea's third attempt to launch its spy first spy satellite into the orbit may take place within a week or so. In fact, as early as this week. For more, let's turn to Bruce Bennett this morning. Welcome back. Thank you very much. So it is highly likely that the launch will take place in the coming weeks, if not within the year, because making that a success is one of the regime's major military goals of 2023, right? Oh, absolutely. And in fact, two failed launches is very embarrassing for Kim. That's something he can't afford with all his other failures. So it's important for Kim that he get a successful launch. Definitely. Now, this past Saturday, November 18, was a North Korean holiday that marked the test firing of its Hwasong-17 ICBM in 2023, uh, 2022, uh, last year. Now, despite those expectations, the day went without any special event or celebration. Now, why, why do you think the North kept quiet over this anniversary? Well, I think, first of all, the answer is we don't know. Kim didn't tell us. But I think if we want to take an educated guess, I'd say that with two failed launches of satellites, that Kim was very anxious to uh, not get ahead of himself, not try to make uh, space launches important when he's got a record right now of failure. So I think he was trying to wait until after he completes a successful launch, hoping that this third launch will be successful uh, before he makes any big deal about his space launch capabilities. Right, you are correct because the North was announced to announce something. They usually do that a day after. Now, back in 2021, let's go back two years uh, ago, the mm -hmm. North designated November 29 as Rocket Industry Day, that is to celebrate the anniversary of the country's largest, the regime's largest ever nuclear missile test. But the regime's calendar that year, 2021, didn't show that anniversary. Now, do you think the regime's 2024 calendar will give more clues about Missile Industry Day? What do you think? Oh, I think we'll probably see something if the third launch is successful. Uh -huh. If it's not, then I don't think the regime is going to make a big deal about it. Mm. This is the kind of thing where very clearly they want a success. And if they get it, then they'll make a big deal about it. Definitely. So the Missile Industry Day will all depend on the successfulness, success, or the failure of the third launch attempt. Now, I have to point out, it's been a while since the leader Kim Jong-un has been out seen in public. Now, why is this? What, what do you think he's up to? Well, this is a case that's been true for years. He's uh, been someone who's disappeared for significant periods of time, for mm -hmm. a month or more, many, many times in a year in, in past years. So this is a character of his, uh, his uh, operating procedures. And I think we have to recognize that he may be ill. Uh, he certainly has been ill in the past with problem with his foot that uh, took him out of the the visibility for over a month. Um, he may have had other illnesses. And uh, so it could be that, or it could just be that he doesn't very much like being in the limelight. He wants more privacy. We just really don't know. 
Right, but he must be paying close attention to all these uh, diplomatic developments that are happening from the APEC summit, you know, the summit between U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese leader Xi Jinping, right? Oh, absolutely, but that's all bad news for him. Mm. The fact that the outside powers are uh, cooperating closely, I mean, he would really like to break the U.S. rock alliance. Um, the fact that he's failing to do so when he's told his leaders that he wants to do it, that's also another failure. So uh, he's going to be really, really careful with those kinds of things to downplay them until he can start establishing some of his own successes. Right. Before I let you go, should we expect a plenary meeting in the North at the end of the year or at least the beginning of New Year? Because that's what usually happens, right? Now, if a meeting does take place, what kind of goals do you think the North will lay out for the New Year? And again, I think that in part depends upon whether or not the third launch is successful. Okay. If the third launch is successful, he's going to talk about more space launches and mm -hmm. wanting to do more in that kind of area. If the third launch is a failure, he's going to want to ignore that. More generally, he's got a lot of economic problems that are going on that he needs to overcome. And with Russian assistance, he's going to have more food available. He's going to look better in a variety of ways. So I think he's going to tout the, the accomplishments of the regime without directly attributing that to support from Russia. We should definitely get back to you after the third launch attempt actually does take place. All right, thank you as always for your insight. We appreciate it. Thank you. In the 2023 League of Legends World Finals, South Korean team T1 has won its fourth title. T1 defeated China's Weibo Gaming in the final on Sunday by three games to nothing. It's T1's fourth victory following its wins in 2013, 2015 and 2016. The annual esports tournament was held in South Korea for the first time in five years, with 22 teams from nine regional leagues competing. T1 player Cheo Jae or Zeus was named MVP at the finals, while team captain Lee Sang Hyuk, or better known as Faker, became the only player in the world to have won a total of four world championships. League of Legends is an online battle video game developed by American game developer Riot Games in 2009. The world's first UNESCO International Center for Documentary Heritage was opened here in South Korea. Now, it opened in Cheongju, the hometown of Jikji, the world's first metal movable type. Our Choi Soo Hyung visited the center. Documentary heritage is a key part of our understanding of the history of civilization. The UNESCO International Center for Documentary Heritage opened on November 1st in Cheongju, Chungcheongbuk-do province, home to the world's first metal movable type, Jikji. Korea, with the Asia's largest and the world's fifth largest documentary heritage, became the first to open such a center. Uh, UNESCO believes the power of knowledge that has contributed to facilitation of uh, uh, human development especially through documentary heritages represented by uh, global communities. A special opening exhibition prepared for this event delighted visitors. This exhibition brings joy by exploring the documentary heritage of the world, focusing on the big theme of giving light, progress and hope to humanity. Visitors can experience the history of humanity accompanied by records as they pass through five zones. In the Zone 1, an artwork shapes light against the darkness using the Nebra Sky Disc, likely created in the Bronze Age, showing celestial phenomena as a motif using light and shadows. You can also see the big wall art screen, which combines documentary heritage with modern digital media. The head director of this opening exhibition said anyone can truly feel the essence of the light. Um, I, I use light as a metaphor so that the audience can actually feel the, the discovery and um, the significance through their, their own um, discovery, through the, 
by being in the exhibition. Additionally, visitors can contemplate records of humanity's darker moments such as war, disease and discrimination and witness the efforts made by humanity to overcome such darkness. In the final zone, visitors also have the opportunity to leave their own records by writing a letter. I want them to forget about everyday you know, worries, you know, forget about the contest traffic and city noise and the lights you know, noisy lights and signs on the way. The exhibition will be open until June 28th next year. Cho Jun Hyung, Arirang News. Good morning, I'm Kim Ji Young, and we'll now turn over to stories from around the world. We begin in the United States, where with only a year to go until the 2024 election, President Joe Biden has seen the lowest approval ratings of his presidency and is behind the likely Republican candidate Donald Trump in almost all recent major national surveys. Recent national surveys from CBS News, YouGov, CNN, SSRS, Fox News, Marquette University Law School and Kinnipiac University all showed former President Trump ahead of the incumbent Biden by between two and four percentage points. This is the first time Trump has surpassed Biden in the majority of national general election polls and is also a rare moment in history for an incumbent to be behind in pre-election polls. Following the early November Reuters Ipsos poll, which showed 39% approval rates for Biden, an NBC poll released on Sunday also came in at a new low of 40% for Biden's approval rates. A majority of voters also disapproved of Biden's handling of the Israel-Hamas war. Now moving over to the Cricket World Cup, where Australia beat India in the final to claim the country's sixth title. Australia won the final on Sunday by six wickets with seven overs to spare, assisted by Travis Head's sensational century. In the final of the 2023 ICC Men's Cricket World Cup at Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad, India, was the favourite to win after a 10-match winning run leading up to the finals. But with over 100,000 fans in home crowd and India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi up in the stands at the game, India was bowled out for 240 runs and Australia's Travis, hit, Travis had hit 137 runs to help his side reach 244-4. to four. The next Cricket World Cup will take place in South Africa, Namibia and Zimbabwe in 2027, with an expanded 14 teams competing. Now, Rosaline Carter, the wife of former U.S. President Jimmy Carter, has died at the age of 96. The Carter Center announced Sunday that she died peacefully at home in Plains, Georgia, where she was receiving hospice care. Mrs. Carter had been diagnosed with dementia in May of this year. As the wife of the 39th president, she was a well-known figure in the U.S. politics for her role as close advisor to President Carter. After serving as the honorary chairwoman of the President's Commission on Mental Health, she founded the Carter Center in Atlanta in 1980, along with her husband to continue their humanitarian work. Now, moving on to the final story, a rare bottle of Macallan 1926 single malt whiskey has been sold for a record-breaking 2.7 million US dollars. The sale at a Sotheby's London auction on Saturday makes it the most expensive wine or spirit ever sold at an auction. The Scotch whisky manufactured by the famed Macallan distillery was matured for 60 years in dark oak sherry casks before being bottled in 1986. Only 40 bottles were ever produced and were not made available for purchase, rather offered to top clients. A similar bottle of Macallan 1926 with a different label was sold in 2019 for around $1.9 million.
Good morning. The recent dramatic roller coaster temperatures have led to many people catching colds. Even in our office, many couldn't make it to work today. Take good care of yourselves. Wearing a face mask in crowded areas can be a big help, and remember to wash your hands frequently. Although afternoon highs will be a couple of degrees lower this afternoon compared to yesterday. As winter approaches, the air is becoming drier. A dry weather advisory is in place for the east of Gangwon-do in Gyeongsang, Bukdo province today. Daily highs will be similar to slightly lower in most places. Seoul and Chuncheon are expected to top out at 11 degrees, Daegu at 14 degrees this afternoon. Air quality will be decent nationwide, and we can expect sunnier skies in the upper regions today. The weather will stay warmer than usual through the middle of this week. However, rain is expected to bring freezing temperatures to the country afterwards. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions. We thank you for watching New Day at Arirang. We'll be back tomorrow for Tuesday's edition at the same time, 9 a.m. Korea time.